Hello everybody and welcome back to MJ Games. Now today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for franchise mode or in other words maybe some little cheats that can kind of help make your franchise mode a little bit easier if you're trying to rebuild a team or just in general. So there will be multiple that we walk through and how this is going to work is I'm going to choose the Pittsburgh Pirates for the worst team in baseball and as the season progresses I will go through the tips kind of when we reach them. We're really just going to go through stuff on the first year and the first off season. Okay. So I'm going to choose the Pittsburgh Pirates. <clears throat> Excuse me, get started. Um, let's do auto manage manual. I'm just going to do all these to auto manage. Now, let's go ahead and jump to the regular season. So the first thing that I've noticed, and it's definitely been like this in past years but not as much as this year, is if you go to the free agency. Okay, now this guy is a free agent. <clears throat> um, I guess because just when they made the game, he still hadn't signed yet. But there's always going to be other players in here that are young, like this guy right here. Now his potential is D, but you'll find some guys who are going to have A or B potential. And so what you can just kind of do is kind of go through these. Like this kid's, this guy's 25, but he's A potential. And sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. So you can just kind of go through and look. And I always look for the 18-year-olds or guys who are young. And even if they're just guys who can fill up your minor league system, like this guy right here, he's a B overall, right? It would take him a while to get to the majors, but B overall, 63, or sorry, a B potential, 63 overall. I mean, look at that. A potential, 18 years old, 61 overall. So you can just sign guys, right? But at this point, you know, I've got a full roster. So I'll kind of go through and... I'll sign some of these guys just to kind of show you how you can use some cheats to kind of um, bolster your team. And, you know, this is a guy that I'd sign. I mean, he's potent C potential, but look at his stats already. He's 18 years old. So you just kind of go through and look through the list. I mean, that guy's one. So you can just kind of see, you know, that's kind of getting lower, obviously, and, and definitely up there in age. You know, I'd sign him as well. And so, I mean, there's another one. And at the very least, these guys can become trade chips later later down the road as well. There's another one I'd sign. So, I mean, it's just, you know, there's always um, guys that you can sign like that. I don't know why. Like, this guy's 24, but he could be a good minor league, like, bolster, kind of just deep in your team. So, I don't know why they do this. But I feel like it's definitely more prominent in this year's game. And it's not the same guys every time either because... Um, on another video I was doing, there was a guy who was, uh, I think he was 19, but he was an A potential and he's like 68 overall, which is just crazy. So, you know, I'm just kind of going through looking here. Like, here's one I'll get. I mean, look at that. 22 years old, 73 overall, A potential. Like that's, that just doesn't make any sense, right? Here's another one that I'd sign. I mean, look at those, look at those stats, right? And so, like I said, I'm just kind of going through here and seeing all the different options. I mean, I'd sign him. I'd sign him as well. I'd probably also sign that guy just for depth. Um, I mean, I mean, look at that. 19 years old, A overall. Usually relief pitchers don't have too many like that. But you could sign this guy because he's 18. He's got C potential. Um, and then if you look down starters, usually there's a couple starters. I'd probably sign him. Um, you know, might as well. I mean, you just kinda you just kinda kinda look at your team and see what do you want to sign. You know, how easy do you want to make this, that kind of thing. Um, and so, you know, I'm just kind of going through and looking at guys like this guy. A potential, 19 years old, 63 overall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign a lot of these guys because the whole point that I'm trying to get with this video is just showing you how when you use kind of the cheats that have been provided, essentially, you can really bolster your team a lot. So I'm going to sign a lot of these guys, and I'll see you guys after I do that. All right, everybody, welcome back. And so I signed a lot of guys just to kind of show you. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, as, as we look through a lot of this, basically my entire, not my entire roster, but a lot of my roster now, except for right field, they didn't really have a lot of options there, um, is made up of A potential and so forth. Um, so like we see here. Now, the one problem sometimes is sometimes when you sign guys, they were already on a 40-man roster or something like that. So as you can see, they were added to my 40-man and put in the major leagues. So obviously, 12 of the guys that I signed were put on the major league roster. So that's going to change in a second. 
like you can see this guy right here same issue these two guys and so forth so that could kind of mess it up in the future if you need to adjust your 40 man roster which we definitely will at the end of the year um, but the key is that a lot of these guys can be used as trade pieces as well when you're looking for trades um, so that's the first thing like this one you know I man I wish he wasn't on my 40 man because I don't want to remove them because then you know they could pass through waivers and so forth but none of the pitchers are which is weird like this kid or this guy or some of these guys down here right um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to sim ahead to draft day so I will see you guys then all right so we are almost to draft day and since I have the number one pick being Pittsburgh now this one is definitely more of a cheat, but the key is you can see all the players that are going to get drafted, um, decide who you want, and come back and redo your draft, which I can't do that because I forgot to say it beforehand, but there's another way that you can kind of utilize that. So my first round pick, um, let's just go ahead and pick somebody. Now one thing that I look at when these blue chips, to be to be honest, I don't like got, drafting guys that are have a plus sign next to it, but that means it's going to be a long time before they're in the, they're in the bigs right and so the key for me is I want to draft the best possible available player who could get me some help in the big leagues the soonest right and so it's almost like the Chicago Cubs draft style when they're drafting Chris Bryant and Kyle Schwarber and Ian Happ right um, and so for me I look at this kid and I just don't like that none of those are in the 70s so he might be a choice but I'm not going to go with him necessarily I don't like that these have the plus sign next to him um, so let's look at this Carlos Chavez. Once again, I'm not in love with his top level stats. Um, once again, plus sign. We got all these closers, which I wouldn't draft a closer right away. Um, sometimes you do. So this is probably the one I'm looking at right here. Any but or this guy right here. I like the le I like the 18 years of age. Okay, so I'm gonna look at him and look at his stats. His stamina could be good. His hits, so forth. He's got a lot of pitches. Um, that's that's an option also gonna look at this guy down here less pitches um, so let's see he throws a little bit faster but he just doesn't have as much variety I'm gonna go with this guy so now we're just gonna sim through this draft and then I will show you what I was gonna talk about afterwards alright so let's see how we did with our number one overall pick um, okay solid 66 overall so hopefully it can be up in the bigs in a couple years so let's look through some of these other ones okay so he's he's 22 years of age already but he's already at 70 percent um i don't like the 51 52 50 66 okay now this guy's a closer though that's okay so that's one of the guys looking at that i decided to pass on but look at that 73 overall um oh man a couple of relief pitchers taken really high with a overall closing picture like that so what I'm doing here to be honest is I'm taking pictures of these guys and you'll see why later but I'm looking at some guys that I could potentially trade for and get for some very um, low-level prospects and I'll explain that so right now I'm just looking at all of the top guys anybody that I might want um, let's see let's go back to him another starting pitcher okay so that was the other guy I was looking at so his numbers are, or starting numbers, a little bit higher, I believe. Um, Charles Rowe, look at that. Look at that closing picture. All right, so now what I'm going to do is we're going to go look at a couple rounds down the road where you don't really have A potential. I guess uh, that's a pretty good pick for a second round to see a guy with an A potential. Um, so I'm going to try to find a B potential player that's got a fairly good overall, like this kid, or maybe somebody who's in the 70s that's B potential. Um Yes, that could be an option. And so what I'm doing with this is I'm trying to, like I said, I'm trying to find guys that we could trade to get. Because trading in this game is the system's messed up. Um, and so what actually happens is it's a little bit better this year than in previous years. But it used to be that if a player has not physically played any, any innings on the field, they had zero trade value. So you could trade anybody for the top level prospect just because they really didn't care. Um, so like, let's take this guy for example, 75 overall. He's a C rating, but he's 
I'm got a high number starting out. Um, usually you can find some guys later in drafts that are close to the 70s with a B potential. So that's what I'm just trying to find real quick. Um, and after I look at this round, then we'll go ahead and move on if there are no. Okay, we'll take this guy, this catcher. Okay. So I took pictures of that simp with my phone simply so I can come back to them later. Okay, so I'm going to exit the draft. Let's see how we did real quick with our draft picks. Um, ooh, really good with those. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess that was my pick. <laughs> yep. Um, I didn't realize I was looking at my picks. So oh, two really good ones. That one's solid. Um, I think pitchers are easier to kind of forecast in this game than position players are easier to find steals later in the draft. Um, so now, we're not going to worry about trading at the trade deadline this year. Um, actually, you know what? Um, I'll see if there are any particular trades that I can do using some prospects. And if there are any that I can find that would be um, good to show, I will um, show you guys. And if not, we will start back up the video at the end of the season. So here's a perfect example of the trading system being messed up. I got this kid in a trade. I guess the computer automatically did a trade for me um, with somebody else. And then this is one of the guys that we signed. Literally, this is all I'm giving up for Rafael Devers. Like, are you kidding me? So obviously I'm going to do that because this point of this is to show kind of the cheats that we can do and stuff. And so let's look at another position that we'll really need to help if we want to compete next year. Obviously right field. So let's go to right field and think about a logical trade option. Um, oh, you know what? I love Fran Mill Reyes. Give me some Fran Mill Reyes. So I'm going to look down here and see. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, who the heck is this guy? Okay. Oh, this is one of the guys that we signed. So I'm going to use him as an option because he's, even though he's A overall potential, look at how low his level is. And I signed a lot of these guys, right? So um, Cabello was one that I signed. So it's not quite yet, but then we can throw in another guy. And so what's the position where I've got an abundance of players? Um, and then we could just throw in a random relief pitcher. And so the trading in this game, the trade system is pretty, pretty messed up, um, which is way too easy. Um, so we need a second baseman. Let's see. And you know what I could always do is just wait till the offseason as well. Just because you know we could see who's in the who I'd be able to sign and so forth. Um, where's the guy for? Uh, this guy always seems to do well. Um, how's Nico Horner doing this year? Okay, not great. Um, the guy for the Twins. Um, this guy right here. So it shouldn't take too much to get him. I don't like Wilmer Defoe, but as you can see, already almost have him. Um, this is one of the guys that I signed as a first baseman. I mean, look, and there I can even get somebody else back. So let's go and see who's a young guy that I can get that would help, or even just help the help the bullpen. I mean, are you kidding me? What in the world? See, that's crazy. I mean, just looking at the all the different options that you have. Um, I mean, this is the, that's just crazy. So let's take him a little bit lower money. We're the Pirates, so we don't have as big of a um, we don't have, or what, what about if I, yeah, that, man, that is, that is just so shocking how easy some of the trade stuff is in here in this game. Well, I'm going to do this one because I need more starting pitching. So there we go. Um, and that's to get a second baseman. Now, obviously we need a catcher. And so I'm just kind of showing you how trading and getting some of those guys early on, um, really makes it super easy. Bo Naylor. I mean, he's young. Well, that's a triple A stats. Um, you know, somebody realistic, right? It doesn't have to be somebody crazy. Zach Collins. I'd be happy with him. Let's throw Jake. Is Jacob Stallings really? Okay. Well, maybe we could get somebody else then if Jacob Stallings, if, if they make that trade. So let's look at the different options. Gary Sanchez, Vasquez. Oh yeah, definitely. Let's get this guy. Says we need a little bit more. So this was a guy that uh, 
Um, this was one of the starters that we signed during the thing. Now you throw him in the deal, and there we go. So let's get a starting pitcher, somebody that we can control for a little bit, and somebody who's not too much money because at the end of the day, like I said before, we are the Pirates. We do have to focus on the budget aspect of stuff. Um, Corbin Burns. No way. Reds. Nope. It's not quite there yet. So I'm just trying to look through some options. Okay, this is a good one. All right, so obviously that would be a big time, big time get, right? So we're going to need to give up some big time players. Mitch Keller, I'm going to throw him in there because he just never, never quite lives up to it. Um, and this is another guy who's a high level prospect, but I mean, look, he's 25 at that point. But you know, I'm going to keep him around. Um, I'm going to look at one of these other guys, this guy right here. So that doesn't quite get done, which which is good because as you can see, that's a little bit of a higher level um, higher level guy. So we might need to throw in a little bit higher of a prospect. Um, Fuentes is there; it doesn't quite get him. So I'm just kind of testing some stuff out and kind of seeing what we what trades we can make and so forth. And so I've got a couple um, different first base options. Let's see: is there a position shortstop? All right. Oh, and I could get something else back. So let's see. Jose Alvarado, uh -uh. Archie Bradley. Throw him in on the deal. No, that's too much money. I can't take on that money. Um. So I'm just trying to see what else I could get that I could afford. And throw him in on the deal. You know, I've already got a first baseman. What? Okay, that's crazy. They're gonna give me Alec ba or Bomb on that deal as well. Okay, obviously I'll take that. So now, as you can see, just by kind of fooling with it a little bit, I mean, we 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 picked up some pretty incredible players. So now I'm going to go ahead and sim to the rest of the season, and I'll see you guys in the off season. All right, so we finished last in all of baseball, which I kind of expected that, but now. Here's one thing that's that's so strange to me. Looking at exclusive free agents, which I don't have that many qualified guys, so I guess it doesn't matter that much. I'm just going to tender him and tender him. Even though they're probably going to accept it, I'll just instantly trade them away, and it should give me an extra draft pick, which I don't know why it does that because it makes no sense. Like, I understand qualifying offering a guy, and then he gets picked up by another team, but that aspect just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, okay, so... And those guys never actually played. I signed them. <laughs> they didn't actually play. Um, so we'll see. Um, so now review staff. I don't really care. Um, you know. Yeah, I don't care about Bunny, to be honest. Offer a little more money. So sim to free agency. All right. So now here's where we need to start looking at the budget and stuff. And selecting the 40-man roster. Now, there's a lot of guys on here that I really don't need to be on the 40-man roster, and there are going to be some guys that we look to trade. Um, you know, like a couple of these relievers that I signed, Fuentes, Villa, um, Barr, a couple of these guys right here. Um, and you'll see why in a second. So first thing I'm going to do, before I actually sign anybody, I'm going to go to trades. And the... I forget the second team to draft was all right so I found the guy Matthew Martins and so as you can see it says that it looks like his trade value is really high right but if you actually just plug in any random person so let's say this guy right here it says we need to be getting more value than you're offering us so that that's that is actually an improvement above what it said last year because last year what would happen is it would say oh we're offering you a deal so forth so I'm just gonna put him here and then you can just pick some other random person. So it's obviously somebody who um, I've signed. And I just pick him and interest in the deal. So I just got a stud prospect. Now, if I look at left fielders, Lorenz, I think was the guy's name. Lorenz. Yeah, the other guy that I liked that I thought about drafting. This guy right here. So once again, it shows his value high. All I need to do is find another guy who 
Well, in this instance, there's not many options. But, I mean, look at him. Like, that is, it, it gets him really close to being able to be offered. And then I could trade this guy as well. Not quite there. So, let's see. Is there another guy I can trade? Um, it's right there. So, just by doing that, I mean, that gets me a stud prospect. And so one thing that I, I'll show you some more with that um, in a second, because if usually if you go to, um, if you find a prospect who's not a, an A potential overall, so for example, Estrada's a shortstop, so let's find him. Estrada's a shortstop. He's 65 overall. Probably should have figured out which teams drafted who so that this part wouldn't take as long. Um, Estrada, this guy right here. So once again, it shows his value being kind of high, but you can just take a picture. And in that instance, they would say we're ready to deal. Now, that's not one that I'm going to trade um, just because of since he is an A value. I'm trying to see if there's anybody else. Okay, so I need to sign some players first. Now, when you're um, looking at free agency, okay, at this point, I don't really care about the qualifying offer aspect. I'm just trying to make my team better. So if I think, okay, getting Freddie Freeman's going to help, obviously I can't pay the type of money that that he would want in terms of 31 or like 28 million a year. But what you can do is if you're only doing a certain amount of years on your rebuild, literally just jack up the amount of years and then what you can do is your payout structure can be backloaded plus it says since we're offering that many years look how much money he's wanting per year he's just wanting 12.6 so i can then drastically lower the amount of money that he wants or if we want to make it a little more realistic go to 10 years and we can drop it down to 18.5 million a year and so forth and Give him an option at the end because the players always love having the option. Make the money backloaded. And what's going to happen is it's going to start out on a lower salary and it's going to bump up each year. So early on in the deal, it's a lot more affordable. And then we could just trade him away a couple years or something whenever the money starts getting higher and stuff like that. Because if he's looking for $18.5 million a year, it'll probably start him out at like $10 million. Um, and so that's just kind of a little cheat and trick that you can do. So you can use this to get a couple players to try to better the team. Okay. And so now I'm going to, I'm going to um, let you guys go for a second. I'm going to make some moves here in the off season, re-sign some players, and I'll show you guys what I was able to do. All right, guys. So we're back here at the rule five draft and I always like doing this my first year when I have a team that struggles just because we can look and see if there are any potential guys to pick up. Um, ooh, I should have put him on my, um, he's going to be picked up by somebody, I'm sure. Um, but I should have put him on my list. What I like to do here is kind of look through and see if there's anybody that could give me, give me help. Um, Dominguez could, um, Jose Peraza, not a huge fan of him, but, um, yeah, so I usually like to try to look and see, um, Usually there's nothing too crazy. Like that guy looks like a fairly good option. Um, you know what? I should have put a couple guys on my 40 man roster that I did not. And I'm just now realizing that Kyle Isabel and Lorenz are the two that I should have done that for. Um, so let's just hope that nobody picks them up. Yep. Somebody got Isabel. Let's see. Nobody's got Lorenz yet. Let's hope that it stays that way. I don't actually know. Nobody might pick him up because he was um he was just a drafted player, right? Um. Yes, yeah, so, I mean this guy's pretty solid to get, but I'm not gonna worry about that. So now what I like doing is looking and seeing if there are any top prospects here, like this guy KJ Harrison. Because what I can then do is I can then kind of use that as a way to as a trade piece. All right, so Lorenz is still there. So we see here, this kid is an A prospect. And so I'm probably going to do one more pick if I can. Um, 
And so we see that guy just trying to find guys that are semi close to the majors that have that blue chip prospect um, symbol. And you know, if you can always find pitchers with that, that's, that's a good start, but I can't really. So now let's go see. Okay, second baseman, he's 66 overall. Let's take this third baseman. All right, so that's it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sim to the end of the season. So I'm going to sim the off season, And I just offered arbitration there, but I didn't try to offer anybody contracts at this point. Um, and you'll see why, because, you know, there might be a salary or two that we have to trade. Okay. So now let's look at our budget. I'm sure our budget's a little bit. Oh, we still got a little bit available left, but there, this is the one we got to get rid of, Tyler Anderson. So I'm just going to trade him away. Um <clears throat> Because he was one of my qualifying offer guys and ended up accepting it. So before we do that, though, let me show you who I ended up signing. So I signed Chris Bryant. I signed Noah Syndergaard to one of those long deals where I had it um, back-ended. And same thing with Francisco Lindor. Um, and I guess Zach Gallen, yeah, I offered him a contract. So as you can see, no real high um, salary numbers this year. Other than Tyler Anderson's, which I'm going to get rid of. Freddie Freeman ended up not accepting my offer. So I had two guys who had qualifying offers that I put offers in on that didn't accept. Which means I should get draft picks for them as well. And we will take a look at that. Um, so but first off, let's go to trade talks. Um, see, I know there's a catcher that I was looking at. Um, Mejia, I think was his name. Um, i find the team that he was on. Let me see. Uh, did I already trade for him? All right, buddy. Oh yeah, I did already trade for him. Really? <laughs> yeah. So um, so one thing you can do, just if you want to try to just get rid of somebody, is someone get rid of him, and I'm gonna put prospects. Um, like I'll take uh. So then you can kind of look through suggested trades and see kind of which one do you like, which one works. Um, you know, are there any any prospects that you like? You see whoever's offering the trade. Like, I like that one, center fielder. There we go. Um, so now I'm going to look at my roster. And I'm going to say, all right, so we've got a couple pitchers. You know, maybe I can do another one. We've got some bullpen arms, but not a ton. Um, catcher, if you look pretty good at that. First base, probably need a first baseman. Um, you see, he's, I don't think he's quite there yet. Second baseman, good. So actually what I can do is use Chris Bryan as my first baseman. And then I have a couple of guys here. So we see that um, I've got a couple of guys who are higher level that I can um, kind of look at potentially trading. You know, i got Bobby Wood Jr. here, stuff like that. So between Devers and Baum, or Brom, I always pronounce his name wrong, um, you know, I probably would keep, definitely would keep Rafael Devers. So I'm going to look to trade him. And I'm going to trade him for a starting pitcher. And I really like Ryan Yarborough. So it says more value than his offer. So that's all right. I'll look at another starting pitcher to somebody that I can just kind of throw into the deal. Steven Brault. There we go. So I'd accept that. So now I can use Chris Bryant. Or Rafael Devers is my first baseman, and they'll just kind of automatically put that in. And then Kyle Schwarber and this guy, Brian Reynolds, Fran Mill Reyes. Okay, so I could get a center fielder and a first baseman. Um, so let's start with first base. So let's see. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the prospects that I just got in that um, Rule 5 draft to help me trade for a pretty solid first baseman. So Miguel Sano, I mean, he's uh, so I want somebody who's going to be consistent. I don't really know too much about that guy. Matt Olson, um, and that guy puts up numbers. But that's going to be a lot to get him, I feel like. So we'll come back to him. That's going to be an option, though. Freddie Freeman, Pete Alonzo. Let's see what we can do to get Pete Alonzo. So who are the guys? I'm trying to think. I know there's a third baseman. This guy right here, and then um, is it Packard? Let's see. 
on the active roster, on the 40-man roster. That's crazy that I can do that to get. Um, wow. See, this the trading system just all sorts of screwed up here. <laughs> so as we can see, um, yeah, so this is kind of crazy that's led me, let me do this to get these guys. Um, so I'm going to take him off there right now. And so Schnell doesn't quite get it done. Let's see. So I've got a lot of guys here. I'm trying to remember the other guys that I got in that rule five. KJ Harrison was one of them. Okay, so he doesn't quite do that. So then what I can do is I can throw in this, um, really anybody else there to get Pete Alonso. Good. So now if I want a center fielder, so let's find another center fielder. So I'm just really just taking advantage of some of the cheats essentially in the game. Um, I'll tell you, the Ian Happ actually does pretty well, but one guy that I'm going to look at, I want to get, um, gosh, what's his name for, uh, up and comer for, um, for the White Sox. Luis Roberts. Yeah. Although, look at that. I don't know about that. His numbers weren't great. You know, let's go, let's go big, right? So let's go for. Ronald Acuna Jr. Now this is going to take a lot, so um, so I'm going to give up that prospect. Or would this guy? <laughs> I mean, there's just no way that it should even make it that close. I mean, there is no way that I should be able to give up those two prospects and get Ronald Acuna Jr. I mean, that's just not even that's just not even fair. Um, I mean, that's just crazy to me. Um, yeah, so I'm giving up those three for Ronald Acuna Jr. So, let's see what other crazy, ridiculous trade we can make to get another starting pitcher. Um, to just kind of show how we can cheat the whole system. Like Soroka, why not? Um, would that put me... No, it wouldn't put me over budget. So, let's see. Chad Cool. Um, let's get rid of him. And... This guy ain't. I'm trying to remember if there's another guy that we. So, why in the world? Everybody loves this Travis Hernandez guy for some reason. So I can do that. And if there's a relief pitcher here that I could get, Luke Jackson, Chris Martin. I mean, that's just crazy. That gives me those guys. Okay. I'll take the deal, though. <laughs> so, as you can kind of see, um, the trade AI system is definitely flawed. And so let's sim ahead to the regular season or sim spring training, sim to the regular season and kind of see what we're dealing with. Um, because then I want to see how improved our team is compared to previous years. All right, so now if we look at our roster, actually, you know, let's not look at the roster. Let's look at the pitching rotation. Soroka, Galleon, Syndergaard, Yarborough, Smeltzer. Felice, yeah, I mean, pretty solid group. Bullpen, not so great, but, you know, it's all good. And then looking at the lineups, I mean, Bryant, Acuna, Alonzo, Devers, Lindor, Reyes, Schwarber, Joey Bart. That's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sim ahead to to draft day because there's something I want to show you there. Hello everybody and we're back here at the draft in year two. Um, the reason why I wanted to show you this is because I got a competitive balance round pick which is normally the pick that you get when you offer a guy a qualifying offer and they accept it from another team but yet I didn't have any of those players. So why are they giving me a comp competitive balance round pick? My only guess is because I offered a contract to Freddie Freeman and he didn't accept it and went with another team. So I don't I don't understand some of that. Also, compensatory round, um, or maybe that's the round I'm thinking of. Either way, compensatory round. Once again, I got a pick, and so these two extra picks are either a combination of me offering Freddie Freeman a contract and him accepting it with another team, or me giving a qualifying offer to those two players, even though they still accepted it. That's where the game's still kind of flawed. I don't understand why they give some of these extra picks sometimes. 
So now I'm just going to go ahead and pick these, and we're going to send them to the end of the season. We're going to see how we did with this um, revamped team using some of the um, some of the cheats available in the game. So I'll see you guys then. All right, so we are at the end of the second year, and we went 162. So won exactly 100 games, won the conference, and looks like we had the best record in the National League. Tied with the best record in all of baseball at the White Sox. Um, and so if we look at our, if we look at some of the stats that happen, okay, so let's look at the pitching rotation. I'm um, sorry, but we're watching my parents' dog tonight, and she was just going a little crazy because we got some cats, and the uh, the cats um, are kind of staring her down, and she's not liking it. <laughs> but yeah, so... Smeltzer, not 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 bad. Yarborough, good. Gallon, good. Syndergaard, good. Soroka, great. So I'm going to put him right here for the postseason. Um, and then if we look at the lineups, awesome. Awesome. Really good. Really good. Fantastic. I'll take that. I love Fran Mill Reyes. I mean, that's uh, not great. But why is Chris Bryant not played? Why is he not the DH there? Come on now. And then Kyle Schwarber, which Chris Bryant can play outfield as well. So um, I'll do that. Then, yep. So, I mean, that's not great. Um, Schwarber's not great. But, I mean, overall, I mean, really awesome. Um, let's see. Yeah, let me change that lineup real quick. Right, no DH. Let's put... Chris Bryan in here, um, and then let's go left, no DH, put Chris Bryan. Well, Chris Bryan's already there, so let's do Raphael Devers, and we'll switch the two of them. All right, so now let's just sim this and see see how we do. Um, so we lost the first one, won the second one. Oh, so we ended up losing there. Okay, so let's see. Two to eight. Man. Ugh. Looks like we lost this one. Ooh, that is rough. I had a three-zip lead. Wow. So, obviously didn't get it done, but the point of this video that I was making, and probably went a little bit longer than I meant for it to, was to show you how we took Pittsburgh from the worst team in baseball to the best team in baseball record-wise. In one year, simply by using the cheats and um, different things that the game provides or allows you to do. So, as always, um, if you like like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, so you can stay up to date with more content. Um, and I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.